This lecture is part of an online mathematics course on group theory and we'll be covering a few examples of groups, mostly of order 120 or 168. So first we'll look at order 120, which is 2 by 60. And there are plenty of groups of order 120, but we're only going to be interested in the ones that involve the icosahedral group of order 60. And there are four obvious ways to write down uh, an interesting group of order 120. We can take the group SL2 of F5, two by two matrices of determinant one over the field with five elements. So the number of elements of this is five squared minus one times five squared minus five. That's the order of GL2 F5. And then we have to divide it by four because we're taking numbers of determinant one. So this ends up as um, 120. Or we can take the group that the binary icosahedral group. So you recall that we take the map from the unit quaternions to SO3 of the reals. And we take the icosahedral group here and take its inverse image here. And because this is a double cover, this is twice the order of the icosahedral group, which is 2 times 60, which is 120. Thirdly, we've got the group S5 of all permutations of five objects, and this is order 5 factorial, which is equal to 120. And another obvious thing we can do is we can just take 2 times the alternating group A5, which is order 2 times 60, which is also 120. So we've got four groups of order 120. And we can ask, you know, which of them are isomorphic to each other? Um, well, one way to sort them out is to look at the Seelov 2 subgroup. So if we work out the Seelov 2 subgroup of these, um, we find here it's the quaternion group, here it's the quaternion group, here it's the dihedral group of order eight, and here it's a product of three groups of order two. So we see that these three groups are indeed distinct, although it's really easy to confuse them because they're, they're all quite similar, as we will see. On the other hand, these two groups are in fact isomorphic. So these are really the same groups as each other. Um, so if you've got a group of order 120, um, you can ask which of these groups it does it correspond to? For example, we can take the group of all symmetries of an icosahedron. Um, so I guess, uh, again, the group of all rotations of an icosahedron has order 60, but you can also do th things like reflections of the icosahedron. So this is another group of order 120. And if you work out it's seal of two subgroup, it's z over 2z cubed. So we can strongly suspect it's isomorphic to this. And in fact, it is because the symmetries of an icosahedron has the symmetries plus or minus one. Um, and then it has the rotations of the icosahedron. So it splits as a product like this. So it is in fact two times a five. Um, the, that there are three ways to build a group out of a group of order two and a group of order 60, you can think of the binary icosahedral group as having the group of order 60 kind of sitting on top of the group of order two, because the group of order two is a normal subgroup. This one, you can think of the group of order 60 as having the group of order two sitting on top of it, because the group of order 60 is a normal subgroup. And this group, they sort of sit side by side because they're both normal subgroups. And you remember this is very similar to what happened when we looked at groups of order 24. Here we had the binary tetrahedral group that had a group of order 12 at the center. Then we had the symmetric group S4, uh, again, of order um, 24. And finally, we had the group two times the tetrahedral group, which sort of you can picture as looking like that. So the 
The tetrahedral group and the icosahedral group kind of behave very, very similarly. They can both be combined in three interesting ways with a group of order two. Um, there's a one particular application of these groups is, is to take the binary icosahedral group. So let's take G to be the binary icosahedral group. And we know that G is a subgroup of the group S3 of unit quaternions. So we can look at the quotient S3 modulo G. And um, this, this group here is just a three manifold, and this group acts fixed point freely on it. So this is a three manifold, compact one, that's a rather famous one called the Poincaré homology sphere. Um, now, there's, um, you can form the quotient of S3 by any discrete group. There are quite a lot of them. For instance, you can take a cyclic group or the binary tetrahedral group. So this is always a three manifold. <coughs> um, and its fundamental group is easily seen to be just the group H. So we can obtain lots of th three manifolds with finite fundamental groups. So the fundamental group is um, the first homotopy group. And it also has a homology group, H1. And the homology group is just the abelianization of the fundamental group pi1. Now, the group, um, this group, the, the, the binary icosahedral group has the um, property that the abelianization is just trivial. Um, this is quite easy to see from the fact that the group A5 is simple, so the abelianization must be um, contained in the center of order two, and the abelianization can't be of order two because the binary icosahedral group has no homomorphisms to a group of order two. So this group has vanishing homo first homology. Um, and Poincaré, origin when he started looking at three manifolds, he originally conjectured that if a three manifold has the same homology groups as a three sphere, in other words, it has vanishing first homology group, then it is a three sphere. And a bit later, he found this counterexample. Um, well, so this group has the same homology as a three sphere, but it has different homotopy groups. So it's first homotopy group is order 120. And he then made the notorious Poincaré conjecture that any compact three manifold with the same homotopy groups as a three sphere must actually be a three sphere. And this was proved uh, a few years ago by, by Perelman continuing work of Hamilton as a, turns out a very difficult result. Um, so um, now we'll discuss the groups of, um, well, a group of order 168. So we've seen that the first simple group is order 160. The next simple group is order 168. And there are two obvious ways of writing down groups of order 168. We can take the group SL3 over a field with two elements. And this is order 2 cubed minus 1 times 2 cubed minus 2 times 2 cubed minus 4 which is seven times six times four, which is 168. And we can also take the group PSL2F7. So that's a seven, not a four. And this is order seven squared minus one times seven squared minus seven. And then we should divide it by six. And then we should divide it by two because we're taking the projective group. And this again has order 168. And these two groups are actually isomorphic, although this isn't terribly easy to see. If you try and write down a homomorphism from one of these groups to the other, you'll find it's not at all obvious how to do this. I mean, you know, this is matrices over a field with two elements, and it's rather hard to get from that to matrices with fields over 
groups over a field with seven elements. Um, this sort of isomorphism is one of the many things that makes the classification of simple groups rather tricky because there are, um, for groups of small order, there are all sorts of accidental isomorphisms between groups. For example, you might start trying to classify simple groups by trying to work out what their characteristic is because they should be you know, some sort of matrix groups over fields of some characteristic. And examples like this show that it's kind of tricky to figure out the characteristic of a group because this group has two different characteristics. It's a natural matrix group over fields of characteristic two or seven. Anyway, we, we can write down the, um, some things acted on by this group. First is the Fano plane. So this is the projective plane over the field of two elements. So it's acted on by SL3 of F2. And you can draw a picture of it as follows. It's got seven lines and seven points. And here are the seven points of the plane. And I've also drawn in the seven lines, except there are only six of them. So I'm going to um, draw in the seventh line like this. So this is actually a straight line in the plane, although it looks like a circle because there's there's no way to draw it all with straight lines. And if you check the, if you, if you look at this graph, uh, you can see it's got a lot of automorphisms. And if you look carefully, you can actually see that it's got 168 automorphisms and is in fact isomorphic to these two groups here. Another way this group turns up in is, the, is as the automorphism groups of the Klein quadric, which is x cubed y plus y cubed z plus z cubed x equals naught. So this is a, um, a quadric, that means a degree four curve um, inside um, the two dimensional complex plane. And this quadric also has autom automorphism group of order 168, which isn't all that easy to see. You can easily see a subgroup of order 21, but getting the remaining automorphisms is kind of difficult. Um, this is an example of a Hurwitz surface. So if you've got a compact Riemann surface S of genus G greater than one, then Hurwitz showed that the automorphism group of S has order at most 84 times G minus one. Um, and there are no examples for G equals two. And for G equals three, there is this example here. So for this surface as genus G equals three and its automorphism group is exactly equal to 84 times three minus one, which is 168. And it's the unique um, Riemann surface of genus three with an automorphism group this large. Um, so uh, I think that's all I want to say about these groups. Um, what we will do next lecture is uh, discuss simple groups in a bit more detail and give the Jordan Holder theorem saying that groups can be decomposed into simple groups and the number of simple groups that occurs is unique.